Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps the channel. You know what really helps my channel? Check it out. Tell all your friends about it. That's what you do. Tell them all about the best wine show anywhere. All right. So welcome to my series of reviews of wines from Domaine Bousquet. I've reviewed several of their wines over the past few years. If this is your first time seeing any of my reviews of their wines, please check out the first video of the seri about, series about the Sauvignon Blanc. I cover the background of the winery and the region in that video. Let's get into the stats of this wine, all right? The 2020 Domaine Bousquet Gaia Pinot Noir Rosé. Suggested retail price is $20. It's from the Guatiati Valley in Tupangato in Uco Valley in Mendoza, Argentina. 100% Pinot Noir, certified organic vineyard, made with organic grapes. Hand harvested, elevation is 1,200 meters or 3,900 feet. The soil is gravel and sand. It is aged in French oak for six to eight months. Alcohol is 13.1%, total acidity is six grams per liter. The pH is 3.43. The residual sugar is 1.29 grams per liter. Let's get into this wine. All righty. So I'm excited because every other wine I've done tonight, and this is the last one I'm doing in this session, has been white wine. So I get to do a little rosé. And guess what? The Corvin lasted the entire time. So quick on the Corvin, each capsule should last you approximately 15 glasses of wine. Now, when I do these samples, I mean, I'm doing about two to three ounce pour. So, you know, I should get a lot of pours out of that. But the reality is, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of doing, you know, doing a lot of ch -ch -ch on this. So I would not would not have been surprised, even though I was pretty sure I started with a, a full or a mostly full canister, I would not have been surprised if it had, uh, I, I would have ran out of gas. So I had made sure I had like one more thing here. Anyway, so this is the last of, how many wines did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This is wine number 11 tonight. So long session. I don't usually do 10 plus in one sitting. I usually do around six or eight in one sitting, but it was the whites first and then the rosé and then I have all the reds, which is two, four, six, eight, nine reds to do. And I'll probably do that tomorrow night. So I have 20 wines, plus I have all my specials I do, plus I had all the, the bunch of stuff I recorded, I have yet to record. So I have content into 2022. So color. Anyway, so we have this like kind of a medium-ish copperish salmon color for the rosé, which is weird because I've been saying things like yellow and green and straw for like three hours. So, uh, yeah, so we have like a little bit of copperish color going on here and salmon. So typical, you know, rosé colors. So aromatically, it's about medium, almost medium minus really. Stick my nose really far in here. So I'm finally getting some red fruit for once uh, out of, you know, all the wines. It's all been like, you know, non-red fruit. But it isn't a huge amount. It's like a little bit of raspberry, a little bit of strawberry. I usually expect watermelon out of a rosé, but I don't get really any watermelon. The Pinot Noir rosé doesn't always have watermelon, if I remember correctly. It's a little savory on the nose. There's a little bit of actually earth and not quite funk, but... A little bit of non-fruit characteristics. I want to say there's some type of maybe herbaceousness to it. A little potting soil, dried flowers. It's all super, super, super subtle. So like I'm, I'm like, I think I'm like looking for it because I know what's in. I know what this wine is, so I'm looking for the Pinot Noir qualities. 
it's there, but it's really faint. It's also kind of like this, almost like a little bit of bitterness to it. Let's check that out real quick. Yeah, eight, yeah French oak. They didn't, say, they didn't say how much was new. I don't think it's a ton of new oak. I think it's just like just French oak. Anyway, let's get on the palette. Yeah, 11 wines worth of, I know, TMI, sorry. So, the fruit's a little more dry, kind of. I get actually more cranberry now. A touch of, not quite cherry, but somewhat of a tart sour cherry, cranberry. I don't really get the watermelon, but it's really tart. There is a slight herbaceousness to this. There's also a little bit of earth to it. Ooh, we just got a little strawberry. Um, it's pretty tart, or it's more more like it's it's pretty acidic. It's not super high acidity, but it's there, and it's definitely dry. You know that one point two nine grams per liter. It's super dry. In the champagne world, this would be called brut nature. There's that kind of dried flower potpourri thing. It's not super dried out. There's a little bit of freshness to it, but, but it's, it's like, there's, you know, there's like a little spice component. That's what it is. It's almost like the, you know, going to the antique shop or the world market or the Pier One. And you're getting a little bit of that incense quality to it. All of this is super subtle. It is not an in-your-face rosé, which there are some rosés, a lot of rosés, even even Pinot Noir, that really hit you in the nose, hit you with all that flavor. This is really subdued. I'm a little surprised by that because this is, it's not room temperature, but it's pretty warmed up. And so I was expecting really a lot out of it. It's like, I feel like this is what I would expect if I pulled it right out of the fridge. And it, it's been sitting out for three hours. Actually, a little bit longer. It's a little bit of like dried orange peel to it. I almost say creaminess, but there's a little bit of broadness to it. Everything is like super, super subtle. I like it. I think I was expecting more out of it. It, it sucks because it's it's the last one of the night. And it's 20 bucks. I mean, it's worth $20. It was the last one of the night. I was kind of expecting to kind of hit a high note with it with, you know, finishing it with a rosé, especially after a lot of, like, really high acidic wines. And I just, I mean, I did swallow a little bit right here because it's my last wine of the night, but... Yeah, I, I like the wine. I think it's worth 20 bucks. But I think I wanted more out of it, which sucks because I was I mean, so excited about all these other white wines I've been doing, and... I've always liked the, the Bousquet stuff and the Gaia particularly. So I like the wine. I think I'm just a little bit um, surprised that it wasn't... It should not be over the top, but I was expecting a little bit more out of it. This is easily a wine that could be something where I try it later on and I'm like, yeah, man, that's really good. This really could be palate fatigue. And this is one reason why I usually avoid doing these types of long sessions, but I feel obligated to try to get a bunch of wines reviewed in one, in, in a short amount of time. This is easily, I've easily done way more wines as far as like just tasting in general and doing like whites, reds, sparkling, rosés. And you, you really, you really mix it up. And I don't feel like I have palate fatigue at all because the very last one I did, I was like all over it, man. Like I was like, I, I didn't feel like I had lost any of my taste of my palate. So I'm going to be kind of un, uh, undecided on this. I think the potential's there. I think it just, it just hit me in the wrong, the wrong spot. It just may, I may have just like not quite where it should be, or I may not be quite where I need to be. Um, but yeah. Hey, Future Mark here. So I'm interrupting the, uh, this is the first time I've never done this. Future Mark, I'm interrupting 
the episode of this wine. So as you probably could tell, I, I matter, I don't know where I inserted this, but I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of this wine and it was really disappointing because I like everything these guys do. So I'm going to give this wine another shot. Now it's, it's not completely room temperature. I've been recording for a couple hours. I took it out of the fridge. I thought it was gonna be done a lot sooner, um, but that's fine because room temperature wine should be like, should show everything really well. So we're gonna try this wine again. Looks like I've never, I've never done that. Let's give the wine a second shot type of thing. Now I have done something like, you know, I had the wine six months, 18 months later after Coravin, but that was, but that was like a regular review. And I was like, Hey, let's revisit it and see how well the wine did using the system over time. Not, Hey, the wine wasn't, I wasn't happy with the wine. I'm not saying the wine is a, was a bad wine, but let's, I might've done this after the whole thing. I don't know. Okay. I mean, ar aromatically, it's great. I mean, you got the, you got the red fruits. I don't remember if I got strawberry last time. I do get a little bit of strawberry, raspberry, that type of thing. It tastes good. Here's the deal. I don't know if I still got all the white wines here. It's like three days. It's like, it's almost a week later, me revisiting the wine. I don't know if, um, I don't know if a different day, a different time was mattering for this wine. I don't know if it's because I did all those Sauvignon Blancs and Albarinos that maybe my palate was kind of getting messed up. It shouldn't have been, especially because we had kind of shifted gears. I like the wine. I like the wine better than I did when I first recorded the episode. It, it does need to be chilled a little bit more. So, but because it isn't completely cold, I'm able to taste a lot of stuff out of it. And when I did it, when I did it the last time, it was the last of the lineup. So it was about it was about this long out of the fridge anyway. So it was about the same <clears throat> temperature. And I did, I had done the, I, I did the review of this wine, but it was like an hour and a half ago, almost two hours ago. So my palate's fine. So I don't have anything weird going on. I would say that I like it. And I think it tastes a little more Pinot Noir Rosé like. It doesn't have the usual Provence you know, grouping of grapes, you know, that Maved, Cinso, maybe a little Syrah, Grenache, that type of stuff. Um, I like it. Let me word this very carefully because I don't want to make it sound like I don't like the wine. I like the wine. I think I've had rosés that I like better. But I think this is a quality wine. I think it's priced appropriately. I think it's good value. I think I, I will definitely enjoy this wine. Like I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm going to drink it just to drink it. No, I'm going to enjoy this wine. So it needs to be chilled a little bit better and that better a little bit more. Uh, it'll it'll make it a little bit uh, better. Um, it'll, it'll be a better tasting wine. But I could drink this wine room temperature or not quite room temperature. It's pretty close though. Like with a good food pairing, I think, I think this wine will start shining. All right. I don't know where I'm inserting, where I'm coming back to the other show. So I, yeah, I don't know what else is going to be said after I just, after I cut away from this, but the wine is a good wine. At the time I was kind of giving it like, I don't know, type of thing. So I'll send you back to the rest of the show. Get the wine. If you like Pinot Noir Rosé, especially from Argentina. Come on, man. Like nobody has that. Well, okay. Maybe people have it, but yeah, check it out. I'll recommend it mainly because it's Bousquet and I've had a ton of their wines. I've never been disappointed that I can remember and I'm not disappointed by it, but I'm like, I was like, ah, it was just a little bit better or different, a little bit more. Yeah. Anyway, you know, that's going to, that's going to do it for today's show. Listen, I definitely want to thank uh, Kate and Jane over at Creative Palette. They've been supplying these wines and a lot of wines for me and have been super supportive of the show. So this is why it's always difficult to be kind of like, eh, the wine wasn't hitting, you know, wasn't quite gelling with me. I wasn't feeling the wine. But they know I will say my 
honest opinion of a wine. I'm not afraid to do it. I've had wines that were like, you know, that six to $8 range to like $100 from them. They've given me a wide range of wines and I'm going off script on this because I'm trying to justify all this, but they've been super supportive. And I like the fact that they're not worried about if I don't like the wine. Because here's the thing. Uh, I'm here to give you my honest opinion of the wine. I get free samples from them. And I get a lot of free samples. I mean, not as many as some other people, but I do, do get a lot of free samples throughout the year. So there is a pressure. There is a... Um, an expectation sometimes that you're going to give a really good review of a wine. If you've been watching my show for the last 10, 11, 12 years, you know that I will tell you whether I like the wine or not. And I'll also tell you whether I think the wine is well made. I may not like the wine, but I think the wine is well made. Or I may think the wine's horribly made. Usually I don't like the wine that's bad, poorly made. I think the wine is well made. I just, I just think maybe it's just not connecting with me. I mean, that be for some reason, which is weird because I do like Pinot Noir rosés a lot, especially compared to the traditional Provence rosés. But for some reason, it's just not it's just not connecting with me today. I think it's well made. You should buy it if you like Pinot Noir rosés. It's kind of hard for me to say that with a straight face. That you should buy it, but I don't particularly care for it. But I think it's well made. Anyway, you know what? Like I said, it's gonna do it for the show. If you like what I'm doing here, hit the like button, subscribe, tell your friends. Until next time. Check it out. Have some Pinot Noir Rosé from Argentina.